Welcome to a brand new episode of the Real Life Podcast, a member of the Nation Network of Podcasts and delivered by DoorDash. Welcome to Real Life, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on right now? I think that I'm in love with Matthew Kachuk. Are you guys all drunk? Welcome to episode 365, I think, of the Real Life Podcast. That's right, yep. I got it. I still got it. I'm a little hungover. The voice is a little raspy. Why? But I still got what it. What happened? Um, what happened? Do you drink red wine? One sec. First off, podcast brought to you by the HGA Group. We love them very much. Here to make your business better. If they were available to make my hangover better, I'd love them even more. Mm-hmm. That's not really their wheelhouse, and I did it to myself. Well, on behalf of HGA, I know they'd want to know what are you talking about and uh, where are you going? With so, are we, should we start with the trip to Calgary then on today's episode and how that? I went? can't imagine uh, anything more important. Actually, on the bus trip down to Calgary, I was talking about the services of HGA to my co co rider wingman Brad Stepenko. Yeah, he was. He's interested. Look out, HGA. The Stepenkos are coming. I don't get my little graphic. Good today, referral Tyler. network. Good job. I was working on it. It was a good trip, man. You know what? For me, like it just, it felt good to be back on a bus again, going down to Calgary, making some noise. It yelling. is fun. Like it, it is like, it, like we were just like, it, well, the vibes in the bus were extremely positive. Excellent. Which is just great. And it's a bunch of people, uh, in, in pause, positive vibes heading down, you know, having nothing but great outcomes in mind going to Calgary. Like Wanya, I know you're not a better, but if you heard the betting chat on the bus, <laughs> Oilers fans were drinking the Kool-Aid. Oh, it yeah. was going hey, man. real smooth on Saturday. Let's bet on the Oilers to win every which way from Thursday. Oh. I'm all for it. That's I'm basically that what we bet. did. I bet on a Gordie Howe hat trick. <laughs> I bet on some weird yeah. concoction that of outcomes that paid plus 11,000. <laughs> uh, I was having some fun. Did did any of them come true? Did you bet on any well, of All of them hinged on the Oilers winning. Yeah. yeah. I got I got saved by a couple. I had a I went in heavy on a nuge prop that I forgot. And I also went in on heavy on dry saddle over a point and a half. So those actually kind of they oh, that's nice. almost balanced me out. I wouldn't say balanced me out, but they got me close. Yeah, I was in I'm, the ballpark. I'm I'm on the same boat. Like the nude shot prop I went heavy on. And uh McDavid <laughs> over one and a half points I was heavy on as well. So um ended up making back a little bit of it. On blackjack? No, no, I made back a little on the no comment. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, the sports books were very profitable uh from or those fans. Yeah, um, that was not great. Uh, the game itself, but that anticipation though, when you put that in, uh, and the, the best you got, you're riding the high until yeah. it doesn't come through. Come on. And now, also, what was the situation? The saddle dome? Were there rumbles? Is the building one good sneeze away from being rubble? What's there, the situation? There was like rumbles in terms of fights. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was so yeah, there was we, a, we there was were a, in the press level, and 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 so at that uh, that IE are also known as like part of the, the in the saddle. The high saddle. You're basically on the side. Sure. So there's two sure. two two sides of the of the saddle. So there's a side the we side were on. Saddle. And and there was limited violence on that side. But I'm told because I had some fa- I had some family on the other a lot of a lot of verbal altercations. I had some family on the other side of the saddle, and they reported there was some uh, there was some, a few tilts. Uh, also, uh, our boy I am bikes. Bikes was bikes he, was there. He yeah, reported. his whole row in front of him was cleared out. From yeah, a tilt. he had an extra extra leg room there. Yeah, the other side of the saddle was was, <laughs> was really hot, but it was spicy in there. When you got in there, the vibes at the saddle mm-hmm. dome late start Saturday night Battle of Alberta. Yeah. It was it was spicy yeah. in there right when you walked in. There's one thing they do. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, we will dig deeper into this. The saddle dome is an absolute dump and Terrible. we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll unpack that later. And now they're down a broom. Never mind. <laughs> well, allegedly. Allegedly. But the one thing they do do, and I guess the Oilers do. kind of do this, but they don't is when you walk into the building, they have happy hour in the building and it's $5 beers or $5 eyeballs. And when I say beers, it's a certain beer. It's bud. Uh, you can only get bud, but it's $5. That's uh, a good and, deal to get there early and party before the game. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, you know, that was kind of economical and, and what they do at the, at the top and the press level, because everyone goes up to the press level, like at the very last minute, cause you don't want, first of all, it's rarefied air up there. So it's tough to breathe. So you want to limit your exposure mm-hmm. up there. So what they did was I encountered, I went in the lineup, like I got there like 10 minutes before puck drop up top. We got to the game like 90 minutes before and we we're hanging yeah. down in the lower areas is that they, they keep the hat because no one, since no one comes up, they keep the happy hour going. 
Really? So what, my first, during the game? My first two beers right before right before puck drop cost me ten bucks. Wow! Wow! That felt good. That's tremendous value. But then, yeah, and th- and that's about the it's only they have thing. to get you liquored up to watch the insulting uh, well, Calgary Flames it, yeah. hockey. And then yeah. they, and they know the next t- couple beers you get for the rest of that because the infrastructure up there is horrific. Like it is impossible to like get a beer and take a leak without missing any hockey. There's there's no way you can't do it. It's it's I have my brutal. sneaky alumni lounge route that I like to take. And even then it didn't work. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's that? What's that? Well, mm. there's an alumni lounge right below where we sit. Your old pal. Bagnuck like for the there. flames alumni. Well, for whoever gets in there, myself included. Okay. I'm like a phantom. I, I swoop in. That's you go I, pee where the old flames pee. That's why I try to go. <laughs> but the lineups were very, very long and I could not. What do you get say? You're Sean Monahan. If anyone asks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, he wouldn't yeah. have been playing. So yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's basically being a forced alumni right now. Uh, but, but yeah, saddle dome, not that nice. And I, I don't know what is going on. on. I have never seen this. Our, our section, our stairs were a virtually a slip and slide. They were, they were greasy. People were falling on their ass down the what? stairs, like all yeah. the time. It's because they want everyone to want a new arena. Right. So they're like, look how shitty this is. And these slippy stairs. Yeah, well, it's working. It is. Yeah, it's it's special in there. They yeah, uh, am I remembering wrong? But back in the day in the three hundreds, weren't there sometimes like chairs missing? Oh, probably. Like, yeah, Not you so. had to just sit on the concrete bench. I that thought it used chairs to yeah. screwed into. Yeah, I, I could have sworn it used to be bench seating up there, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Casado Dome, not yeah. great. Result of that hockey game, not great. Not a good city either. And Enter- entertaining though, the game at least, right? Well, it's like. When that happened, the first three seconds, I'm like, oh my God, it's happening. We are going to just drop the thunder. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're buzzing the first 10 minutes there. Yeah. Like Connor hits that right crossbar. crossbar right after, and then they go back yep. and score. Like, yep. fuck. It was a very entertaining game. It was. It was. We but, just kept fucking breaking down. And every time we did, they just scored. Every time. Yeah. And I, I, I remain convinced that if they score on that three on one early in the third, with uh, Pugliarvi across to Kane and Markstrom just robs them. I think we're singing a different tune today. I think the Oilers maybe get a point or they lose like seven, six. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I know that, that was because once again, they went back and scored right after that. Yeah. And then again, right after that. And it was like, Hey, the wind was out of their sails at that point. Ugh. It's over. But I think if they score and they get that big goal at that point, I know it sounds homerish of me to say that, but I think they could have. Well, like we just watched. Why do you pull it? Why do you pull a goalie in a one goal game? I don't get that play. Woodcroft. I think I, it wasn't more about the goalie. I think it was about trying uh, yeah, to get the, the, boys the boys fired up because they defensively were non-existent. You like it, yeah. it, it was it was Keystone Cops. They just like started falling uh, for no reason, and like all this weird shit was happening. And the Flames were creating chaos. And every time they scored, every time that happened, you were seeing this this weird shit happen before your eyes. And the Flames would score, and you're like, "What is going on?" It was just so if they odd were just too. being basic. If they were just being basic defensemen, none of that would have happened. Yeah, like I agree. Like pulling a goalie in a one goal game is weird, but it was also like five goals on twelve. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, wow, but, but why didn't they to that Smith counter or again? better once he got in? No, no. but like, but it wasn't about the goaltending. It was about it was about getting Spark. the players the a little wake up call saying you're failing your goalie right now. But to that to that point though, the Flames could have pulled Markstrom. Markstrom had like yeah. his save percentage at one point either. was like four hundred at one point. So let's talk about the guys in front of the goaltending. Bouchard had a real bad game. We just watched the highlights before. Nurse we had a bad game. CeCe wasn't good. Um, they were Nobody was bad. good. What do you do? What's the solution? Because it's now been, you know, Bouchard has been up and down for a little bit here. He's had some rough, rough moments in a few games. Yeah. Up and down ex- like a toilet seat? Up and down like a toilet seat. Bingo. Oh. He hasn't been exposed that hard yet this year, but... That was a bad game. Nurse has had a few rough ones in a row now. Yeah. You can't healthy scratch those guys, I don't think. I think you have to let them play through it to some extent, but you can't keep running like this. Like I'm stunned Woodcroft is running the same deep pairings tonight. Oh. <sighs> like it, like they all took a night off. They it was just insane. It was insane. The offense showed up. Yeah, the or the, I mean the offense, the power play was unreal. The PK was solid as well. Like, PK was so, especially in crucial moments, it was solid. But oh god, because yeah, well yeah, no, it was it was a hundred percent solid. Because all the that's the other thing, nine even strength goals. Oh my god, like how that's like you, a month's worth of even strength goals. 
so irritating. Oh man. The breakdowns yeah. were just 10 bell too. It wasn't like That's, minor mistakes. It was just, it was, it mistakes. was mind blowing. You're like, what are you doing? Like, what are you like <laughs> that one when Bouchard just fell like face first into the post oh for no God. reason? Like, I don't you know, know his was. eyes got slightly goo gooed. It makes me worry. You can't see straight or some <laughs> shit. So there's no solution. eh? like, it's just play them through it and hope they start wow, to figure it out. Wow. What are you going to do? Just like, yeah, what are you ch- do? chalk it up to just a trade after absolute, the trade deadline. Yeah. I Chuck, think you just get, you know, get a, Skinner for God's sake. It was a brain well, fart. Yeah. Well, but that wasn't, you can't blame Golden. Granted, you would like to see a save wow. on one of those mistakes. Like you'd like to see, but like they were five alarm mistakes and they, wow. they left yeah. their goalie high and dry. Like you don't, you don't make those mis- mistakes or you limit the, the, you know, the amount that you made of those colossal mistakes. Then it's not, they're, they're, they're not scoring nine goals. Yeah. You would hope that you have a pair of goaltenders that in aggregate, there's like not really a situation where you let in nine goals in a game. You're like, you know what? If one guy's shit, we'll put the other guy in. He'll calm things down. Like to have a nine goal goals against in you. <laughs> but it was, yeah. but once again, like the, like grade a, 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 a no plus question. chances. Like it's no question. And, and, and in buckets, no matter who you blame to, Hearing the "We Want 10 chant when you're down there is just uh, that is just a dagger. I, I, just, I oh. could go a lifetime without ever hearing that flames goal horn again. Oh my god! Oh, it is sucks. so it's so basic up in the uh, in the, 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 <laughs> in the uh, press level, like because you can't see the scoreboard. No. You get you're so limited from view. You get this. Well, as as as, as bikes um, uh, put it, it's the old scoreboard from Tipton. That you get served to <laughs> yeah, see the. Uh, to, Don't to you see. watch it like on a rear projection TV strapped to the roof? They of the used arena? to have those. They don't have those there anymore. But it's just so brutal. Like the view isn't it's, isn't terrible. It's just the, the goddamn it, saddle gets in your way. It just feels like you're very far away though. And the stairs on the way to get up there oh, in the press level. It is a hike and a half. Yep. Yeah. And to top it off, you have to watch Flames hockey. <laughs> That's. Oh, man. It, but there were, like, it, it was it was awesome. There was like obviously we were rolling with a big Oilers crew, but that whole area was full of Oilers fans, which was great. It was such a good vibe, and so when the game felt like when we were in the game, it felt amazing. Mm. Yeah, you knew you felt something special was going to happen. It just went the other way. Went the other way in a hurry. Yeah, you're right though. Hey, Broussard scores. Also, I want to. You know my thing about I said the players need to celebrate like these games mean something. Derek Broussard going down to one knee he with a big, high. he was so fucking jazz to score yeah. that goal. And then even like, I think he yelled, let out like a big fuck. Yeah. After the goal yeah. too. Like, yeah. I love sure. that. They need more of that shit. Of course, of, yeah. Well, it, I, he understands the BOA. He understands how important that was, especially that early in the game like that. I was just like, I thought I, I was starting the, we want 10 chant after that goal. I do. I'll- Mike Smith yells at the D after every goal. Is that the energy you want to see? Yep. I don't know. <laughs> One thing I will say though, I, I got to admit, it's fun to throw your hat for a hat trick in somebody else's <laughs> <laughs> As yeah. sad as I was to lose my brand new hat. Well, There's a lot, do, do, do. a lot of hats thrown. A lot of hats thrown. Brad's Shout out to myself and Rick his. and Bra- yeah, Brad's brand new hat. The brand, <laughs> the brand new. Went. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. But shout out to Brad. He had a backup. Surprised he, did. he didn't have he that had two pocket. hats on him. There was a lot of guys that had multiple hats that what, what I found. So people are just wheeling around with two hats on. Not with them, but like <laughs> you would throw the you. hat and they packed another one. They packed bonus hats. Packed? Uh, what are you packing things and going to a game? What is it? What no, you no, not at the game. You? They brought on the trip. They brought multiple yeah. hats. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. That I can see. I thought I, you meant like, they're like, aha, and pull another hat out at the game and put it on their head. Well, that's why we launched the My Hat Trick hat because it costs you like five bucks. So you'd be willing to throw that thing in a heartbeat. Yeah. I watched my beautiful nation hat float down slowly. Well, not as far as it probably should have gone. <laughs> it's a long throw, man. If you, if, I, I don't think I'd like a to three know. Leg toss. I would like to know what the Guinness Book of World Records for hat toss is because I don't even think it would get to the ice. Mine would have had to been a three, four, or five leg toss. Yeah, Brad. I just tweeted the video I have of Brad Stepanko throwing you right his crisp, brand new it's white, white hat. Oilers Nation hat, and it makes it like oh, six yeah. rows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can go get it if you throw it. Uh, it's good. Um, That's how it works. Also, I would like to put this out there. Brad Stepanko and I did a good luck nation neon nation bomb and mm. dry settle scored a hat trick. That is that's something. That's interesting. That's a you got eighty two of those in you a year? How that manifested. I felt so ill after doing it. Oh, you did it. <laughs> it's because you had just 
well, I don't, I don't know what you want me to disclose or not. I had just shotgunned a raspberry twisted tea and then I did a neon well, that's a tough bomb. cement mixer. Yeah. That my stomach was kind of like, ah, you sure you want to do this big guy? You're the old chemistry on that <laughs> one. So do you want to continue? You you're, didn't even yes. have any red wine in the mix yet. You're, 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 well, you're, well, I'll talk about that in a second. Your rem chuck gets the invite to, from Brad Spangle to come up to our room to yeah. do this. So then his decision is to immediately jump into a shotgun before he leaves his room to then come up and do this. I, hey, I was, <laughs> I was in a zone, man. I just You're wanted to have a good time. I had a friend out with me, so I wanted to make sure he was having a good time. Wanted to make sure he was getting properly lubricated. Sure. <laughs> what was going on in that hotel room? Mm. Well, I, I, well, it's not, it's not the funniest story, but I ended up actually sharing uh, a bed with an underwear model, which was great. <laughs> not very many people can say that, uh, but and, it's the lead up is way fun. And, uh, very appreciated for being welcomed into uh, an underwear model's bed. Jay asked for sheets and it was like, he was asking for the fucking declaration of independence uh, or something. They just could not help him with this two in the morning. Hotel? Yeah. Post. So as always, like, so like we didn't normally Singapore Sam's would go to like after we shut down the bar, but because the Oilers lost, we had no mojo. So we went to Singapore Sam's early, which whatever, just wanted to get that out there. But we walked back to the hotel and like after crushing Singapore Sam's, you want only to do one thing and that is pass out in your bed. So I'm uh, I'm the good guy, so I decided <laughs> to take the hide to bed because we were staying in a suite and there's three of us. So I took the hide to bed, and I go and unfurl it. There's no sheets, no pillows, oh no blankets. God in heaven! So then we call downstairs. Hey, like, hey, like room service or whatever. Like, can you send up some sheets and some blankets? And they're like, oh, you'll have to come down and get them. I'm like, what? So anyways, come down and get them. <laughs> Uh, and uh, the guy just hands me like a Safeway bag, and I'm like, "What? What are these?" He's like, "They're sheets." I'm like, "I need, I need blankets and pillows." He goes, "Man, he's like, you're just gonna have to talk to my manager tomorrow." And I was like, "What?" <laughs> the guy just mails it in. He's like, "Oh yeah, no." I'm he's like, that. "I'm not, I'm not even gonna fight with you, man." Here are these sheets I brought from home. This is all I got. This they is, just did not have the technology to get Jay the, the blanket. What in the fuck? So funny. So an oh, underwear man. model let me uh, into his bed. Bedroom. Yep. Thankfully, it was a king bed and uh, we <laughs> slept comfortably. I also want to give a shout out to one of my buddies from high school that is on the trip and he just he listens to the pod. So he came on, came on the trip. Um, the next morning, I dragged myself out of bed just in time for the hotel breakfast, got it in just under the wire. Gross. And then my buddy from high school who was in a different room was calling me and he's like, hey, oh, open your door, open your door. I'm like, I'm downstairs getting breakfast. And he was like, oh, I didn't think you guys would make it. So I made you both a plate. And oh, then like oh, at the door in our adorable. hotel, that's there nice. was just like two big plates. Nice. I should have sent it up to 1240. I should have. <laughs> shout out to Mason. Good man. Yeah, also Mason's shout out to you, man. your breakfast, which was basically just <laughs> bread that you did not toast. <laughs> the toaster did if not. It, get if it was the scale, like where you are on the toast color. Tyler was the first one, the first slot. He was oh, the ace. I had two pieces of bread with just butter and two <laughs> rather subpar pork sausages. <laughs> and, and, good I, great. and you were and satisfied. In the morning I was good to go. Yeah. How the sheet situation resolve itself? I slept in a bed with an underwear model. No, no. But in the morning when you're like, oh, hey, oh. Uh, good house. Well, just show. like that guy mailing into me, I just didn't have it in me to like, what am I like? What am I going to do? Like, wow. Well, yeah. Like, like, I like. Yeah, I just because backside organizes it and all that. I just didn't want to make a stink. Like what? Are, like what are they gonna do? No, well, that's fair. Give me free breakfast. The next yeah, nation, missed it. the next nation vacation is coming up pretty quickly. It's like two weeks from today or whatever. Less than that. Or yeah, like going to Nashville to watch you. Nashville take Reds. You guys are gonna have a good time. Yeah, no. I will load you up with some hot chicken places you should go to. I'm not a big hot guy. Oh all right. God, of for the love of God, Tyler, do it for the people. I will. I will. There's other people. And then also the Taco Bell Cantina. Oh yeah. That yeah, one yeah. is, you got to go there when it's in prime shape, but they've got live music. That one looks like a spaceship too. I like it's, it. It's uh, it's good. It's good. So there's your, there's your list. There you go. Love Tyler, it. You're fun. I'm certainly hoping we will. I'm hoping the Oilers win and as go well. To Tootsies. Oh, that'll be, that'll be a fun market to, uh, yeah, to celebrate it. an Oilers victory. Uh, yeah. So the Oilers right now sitting still in an okay spot here. They're four points back of the LA Kings with a game in <sighs> hand. So annoying. I know. They were right there. I know. We and were kissing them almost still a point up on the Vegas golden Knights with two games in hand. I know. They're at 77 points. So the Oilers need to go at worst 10 and six to make the playoffs down the stretch here. Yeah. Oh, we got this shit. No, we got it. It's just annoying. Yeah. Because you, you we like, should you be firmly games, in right? second place. 
you think back at games that they just missed both we'll against Chicago. The last week, but I would say, let's look ahead here. You got like the schedule's not easy by any means, but you got a game against Arizona. Have okay. to have it. Then the easy games down the stretch on top of Arizona are probably Anaheim, San Jose, LA. Um, well, that's not taking like they're right with you. I'm Don't talking you have about two against Colorado. Yeah, but I'm talking about the slam dunks because you also get Columbus and then you end the year with San Jose, Vancouver back to backs. You should take all six of those. You should. It's six games against very beatable opponents. You should win all six of those hockey games, in my opinion. And then if you from that Kinda point, at that point, if you just go 500 in the tough games, five and five, then you're going to end the year with 11 wins. You're going to be at 99 points. I don't that like gets this game. Just went out 99 like Wayne Gretzky. Mm hmm. It's a good omen. Yeah. Anyways, um, let's hope the Oilers can do some damage this week because you're right. They get LA coming up this Wednesday and then LA again next Thursday. A Need couple those. of big, big, big games. Big games. Big Playoff games. Like four point games, I'm told those are. Yep. That's what they would describe them as correct. And then yep. you also get Vegas one more time. So yeah. Two. Another four pointer in there. Yeah. Um, 12 points. That Vegas game's at two o'clock the day I fly, the day we fly back from Nashville. No, you'll be back That's like late that easy night make. I think, or something. I can't remember how it works. I don't remember either. Yeah, I, I think you come back in late Friday. All good. All right. Well, what did else you know that 30 about? years ago today, Gretzky scored his 92nd goal of the season for the oil? <laughs> Jeez, that is insane. 92nd goal and everybody's just sitting in the crowd smoking. Yeah. Watching. You like think about it. Leon just got to 47 the other day and we're like, and wow. this is a historic season. Imagine that doubled. Oh. Unreal. I really hope he can beat Matthews. It would, it would just make me feel so good. Yeah, I would. Like it is funny how much shade Connor's getting in the heart talk. I'm not saying like, I know it's yeah. more competitive this year. I get it. It's very like, I think he could certainly work his way back into it at some point. Um, but there's a couple of guys around the league who are just having unbelievable seasons. Roman Yossi. So Roman Yossi, uh, we talked about him today on the daily face off show every day, should. live at 10 a.m. Mountain, 25 minutes straight hockey talk. Uh, he's closing the gap on the Norris. In terms of the betting odds, I'm looking at our friends points bet Canada right now, and they have Kale McCarr at minus 300, Roman Yossi at plus 200. So Yossi might be the smart bet there, but I think there's a case to be made that Roman Yossi should almost win the win the Hart Trophy. I boy, yeah. oh boy, he's got 14, over number 97. He's got 14 more points than anyone else on the team. He's a number one defenseman who's still great in his own end. He could be the first defenseman since uh, Ray Bork in 93, 94 to have 90 points. He's going to set the record for most points by a defenseman in the salary cap era. He could hit a hundred points this season. He's on pace for just over one Oh one. Yeah. It's, it's unreal. It's insane. If he hits a hundred points, he has to win the heart. Like McDavid, McDavid could make this thing close. Matthews is the front runner right now. I don't think Matthews, he, he has a case. I think Chester, I would have Chester, Chester can, over I, would, him. I would put in there. His, his save percentage is insane. It's nuts. He's going to have one of the best save percentage of the salary cap era. But I, in my order right now would probably be Shesterkin, Yossi, Matthews, McDavid. How dare you? Oh, How dare Mark, you put Matthews McDavid in McDavid? just a You're hair fired. Behind. How dare you? What has Matthews done? I just, I just don't think he has as much help as Connor up front. There you go. That's how I spin that into an Oilers compliment. Wow. Hmm. It's pretty nice to have both Connor and Leon in the conversation for these amazing accolades. And yet we're still scrapping to make the playoffs. <sighs> you think this shit would be a lock by now? Oh, it's because yep. we have no one in the Norris conversation. No one in the Vesna and conversation. Janky goaltending. <laughs> yeah. So janky. Drives me to drink, Wanya. Well, that's all right. You had a good time. Do you want to talk to people about the... So the wine skin. The wine skin was a vibe. I, if, it's I a agree. beautiful fashion. It just looks good uh, as a, as, as your satchel of liquid. Yeah. Wanya, I think you'd appreciate the look I had going on. I had the wine skin around the shoulder, pouring some yeah. out for the people. <laughs> so you just waltz right in the saddle dome and no one's looking at nothing. No, I actually had an empty sack by the time I got in there. We polished. Oh, wine. yeah. I ordered a wine at, at, uh, at the place we we're at and then we did a wine tasting. Yep. Yep. Tyler did not finish his wine at Singapore Sam. So I gave it to Princey. Ah, uh, Princey was drinking wine. Like it was shooters. <laughs> he was like, you're M chucking it. Yeah, he was, but yeah, you know what was. he didn't do unless we, well, we didn't, we didn't follow yeah, him home. Bear follow him home. I don't know how the night, the night finished. You might want to check in. I don't think the, the red wine, the great red wine exit, uh, happened. 
What no, was the I'm, puke ratio on the trip? What percentage of people puked? Oh, like 10, 15%? Yeah, very, I'm going to say zero. Zero percent. Everybody. Zero percent. Yeah. Zero, there's one. It would have been probably in the 50s. Oh, easily. But they didn't. So. Yeah. Back in the day, Bag Milk Jay and I used to rally the troops pre-internet and we would make everyone go to the New Year's Eve game in Calgary. Oh yeah, yeah. What were we like? Owen six J? Like it was preposterous. It was bad. I. <laughs> it I, ruined like every single New Year's Eve from like yeah. 2005 I've, to 2010. I've probably been to 12 Battle of Albertas in Calgary, and they've only won once. Oh, and it wasn't during the decade of darkness that they won. Is the game when Andrew Ference just decided to just beat the shit out of Lee Stefaniak? I don't know if you remember that. No, but. uh yeah, that's, that's the only time. Like we are, like, like I, I don't know. Like we I might, figured it out with Nation Dan yesterday. We we were zero and six on bus trips. One and six. One oh sorry, one and six on bus trips, and the one is the one that you should not it's be. It's the one you didn't want to win. You didn't want to win. So like, I don't know. Like these. Like, what didn't you want to win? You did, that's the game you didn't want to win because we lost something very yeah. important to us. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, but, is that the game Connor got hurt? How dare you? Uh, yes. I didn't want to talk about it. Ah. But. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, man, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't. We're going to have to find a sacrifice. We're not very successful on the road and I don't want to blame us. Next time we go, down, no. we're going to bring a sacrifice. We're going to have a little ceremony outside the saddle. Should have burned a flames jersey outside the saddle. That's what I mean. Should've if you have the do. sack to have a hot chicken in Nashville, your Amtrak, this shit will work itself out. Mm-hmm. You think it's on me? If you don't eat a hot chicken, we're probably going to lose. Yeah, we got to go to the right one. Go see the Prince. Don't get all commercial and go to Hattie B's because they've got Come commercial. On. Unless you go to the OG Hattie B's. Okay. And that's that's okay. But if you're within walking distance of the arena, choose the Prince. Hattie B's is And this isn't like tourists. when you went to the All-Star game and we asked you for a clip of Connor saying, Wanya, you're my best friend and you didn't get any clips here, M. Chuck. We actually need you to do this correctly. Okay. And go to Tootsie's. You go to the wrong hot chicken place for fuck. No pressure. I'm on uh, twiggingberries.ca right now, mm-hmm. which is oh, uh, there's Jay. my bedmate. Yeah, the bedmate Brad Stepenko <laughs> is <laughs> front slept, and center. I slept with that model right there. He's rocking some of the ODR gear. He looks just fantastic. Was he wearing that. the twig and berries for your evening together, Jay? You know well, he was. Well, sponsored I, athlete. I didn't want to pay too much attention to that area, but he likely was. Twiggingberries.ca. You just reading his underwear tag. If you want to look just as good as Brad Stepenko. <laughs> I love you. Head to twiggingberries.ca. They're the best. Promo code Nation15 gets you 15% off. Shout out to Twig and Berries. I was hanging out with Brad later in the night after the game and I was asking about how all this went down. And he just, he had the best experience with them over there, too. He just said they made it so much fun. And I was like, you're making it fun for us, pal, because I love these photos. Oh, yeah. I love it. Um, do we want to <laughs> pivot from hockey and talk about uh, <laughs> the Oscars? <laughs> Look at this nah, but the, how photo. does that not like that? Be careful. That just sells we'll get happiness. the brioche bet. Yep. You missed the brioche bet though, Tyler. The what? The brioche bet. I don't know what that means. Well, you won. If we don't talk about a certain somebody doing something to somebody at something awards, (laughs) everyone gets a brioche from bread and butter bakery. If it is brought up, whoever brings it up owes me a brioche from bread and butter. How bad do you want that brioche? When was this discussed? Pre-show. Before the show. I don't know where you were. I was probably setting up all the gear doing Mm -hmm. my job. Probably doing a job. Fair enough. Then taxes or something. How bad, I how bad do you fun. want the brioche? No, I don't want to. I actually don't want to talk about this at all. I thought you guys wanted to talk about it, so I'm no. perfectly fine. Just I'm trying to make a it. stand. It, it's like I've I've only seen one other thing take over social media like this. It was when Michael Jackson died. Okay. Everybody has a take on this shit. Yikes! Yeah, it definitely took over the internet there. For I didn't even know it happened until today. I was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in bed early. I was way in bed early. Well, your M truck bedtime for you. Uh-huh. Got home, crushed a crushed a foe. Oh, nice! That would have been so good. It's mm-hmm. what I needed. Fell asleep on the couch like I planned with Frank. Nice dog cuddle, two hour nap. Woke up, ate again, went to bed. It's oh. actually exactly what I did. I went out, quick lunch, got home, napped from about five till seven. Woke up for an hour, ate tomato soup and grilled cheese. Was back in bed by nine. Yeah, uh, was, was, wow, was that's good living. I read probably three words from Shoe Dog, dropped it on my face. <laughs> I had Just a nice, do it. I had a nice uh, bus ride nap though. Yes, oh, you did. I did too. Yeah, I was jealous of all you guys. I can't sleep on buses. 
I usually can't either, but I was just so exhausted from the night before that I put my hood kind of over my eyes at one point. And as soon as I did that, I like felt my body like sink back. And in my head, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to fall asleep. And then I like woke up and we're back by the airport. I was like, holy fuck, this is awesome. I just enjoyed what Van Wilder. That's what I did. And then Deadpool. I've never seen Van Wilder, never seen Deadpool. Now I've seen most of both of them. I totally like it's it's so good to watch those classic movies because you know, like that's what we do, right? We watch mm-hmm. we watch funny movies and then quote them. It's becomes mm-hmm. part of our vernacular. And so uh, yeah. when he goes it's into Canadian the, culture. Yeah, when he goes into the spiel about I want to take it to the car wash, I want to air dry that shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, just, part the porpoise. Uh <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot. It's a good movie. It was weird. Right? Your M check was like craving chocolate eclairs after watching. Yeah, it. yeah. You it had a real weird. thirst. Don't say stuff it's like that. It's really weird. But anyways, uh, something that just popped into my head, bag milk. We need to work out a day for you to join Blue Jays Nation Radio. Okay. Opening days in like. Two I'm a big weeks. Jays guy, as you know. Yeah. Um, we're going to interview Bag Milk on Blue Jays Nation Radio about him becoming Jays guy this year. I'm going to be cool. blogging for BJN this year. Love it. I don't even feel you'll, you'll, you'll have some takes. Mm-hmm. Well, Cam gave me a very easy job to do, and I think I would be good at it. Which Fan is. takes from just games I watch. Yeah. I put that together. So yeah, we're going to do like an intro to all this on an episode of BJN Radio. Yeah. I think over the next couple of days, we'll, we'll chat, chat about when you're free for a quick half hour chat. Um, but that'll be good. That'll be very, very good. I'm going to derail that podcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fucking right. Let's bring it down, buddy. Yeah. Cam and I were talking. We we're like, oh, what do we want to do for a season preview? And I was like, you know, I think we should do two. We should do like the one with bag milk <laughs> or we have a couple beers, maybe just chat about the Jays. And then we should maybe probably do a serious one. Talk like you. numbers and stuff. And Cam agreed. Fine. So Cam's going to do this from Brazil. No, he's, he's home now. He's home now. Yeah. He just yeah. got home. He's just oh, he's on a vacation. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I thought he it was, was two weeks. It was only one week. It might've been two weeks. might've been two. Yeah. It flew by. Yeah. It did fly by. He was down there for deadline. So I think it was two weeks. He looked like he had a blast. Oh yeah. He just, he, he had lived his best life. He really is. He did get a tattoo. Yeah. He got like that sun. Yeah. Oh, yeah like he had a tattoo. Yeah. I got a tattoo on his arm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Barbed, mm-hmm. barbed wire. Yes. Barbed Arm wire band. with a bio sh- biohazard symbol. Yeah. And he put a butterfly above his bum crack. Yeah. Come on. Did you Ew. see Aaron Carter's new tattoo? No. Does it look good? It's a butterfly. Is it better than the one on his face? It is also on his face. Oh, perfect. It, it, he's running out of face. Hang on. I'm going to look at this guy. Well, it's pretty gross. Well, Aaron's party's gotten dark at the over the years. Oh, how, about, uh, how about the Paul brothers oh partying God, with dude. Bezos on his yacht? Really? What? Yeah, 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 yeah. Jake Paul was... Um, I saw that on TikTok, actually. Yeah. yeah. On Bezos' yacht. And Are they going to try to go to space? Oh, probably. probably. Man, this is an aggressive tattoo Aaron that's Carter it. got. Oh, wow. Very that's... Much. That's, that's a, that's that is a colorful. It's actually very beautiful, but just, that is a, that's a bold choice. Not a fan. Man, that guy has gone a direction, hasn't he? Yep. He's seen some shit. That poor kid. Has he? I don't know anything about him. Uh, I don't think his life has gone very well, man. Oh, well, I've said, <laughs> I don't think you're getting them three face tats when you're having a smooth sleep at night. Hey, you say that to stitches. You got a brick in your face. <laughs> yeah. You have a hard time going back to being Philip Tyler. That is, is that his legal name? Yeah. No. <laughs> All right. Um, how about this? Good news from over the weekend. 1.65 million people tuned in on TV. That doesn't include streaming numbers uh, to watch Canada qualify for the Men's World Cup yesterday. I was one of those 1.65. Soccer Nation. Yeah. Soccer Nation. It's a thing. It's actually kind of cool how invested a lot of casual sports fans have become in this. Because it's a big deal. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a huge deal. And that was a, a very convincing win. Uh, so yeah, like we're on the road. We're, we're going not on the road. We are, we're driving to Qatar. I guess mm-hmm. we are on the road. We're allowed on the road. I think it's going to be really good for kids to get more people. Oh, hundred percent. That's is, a low barrier to entry. This is going to grow the game. The women's game has been booming now mm-hmm. for years, yep. uh, which has been great to see. Uh, we won the Olympics, which was, that was just so awesome Incredible. to watch and see. And, and, and like, that's, that's a big part of now Canadian sports history. And so yeah. now it's nice to see the, the, the men's team catch up to, well, not no, they still a long way to go, but long way. they're, uh, they're at least at the dance now. Yeah, they are. I think, yeah, the women's team kind of paved the way for, for us becoming a soccer country yep. and this now with both the men's and the women's side getting to go to world cups like this, I think you'll see a boom in the next 15 to 20 years, kind of like what happened with basketball, right? And Vince Carter. You know, you look at all those young Canadian NBAers and a lot of them are like, yeah, man, grew up watching Vince, fell in love with Vince and the raps. And then like they ended up going to the NBA. And I think you'll see a bunch of that stuff now. Like Alfonso Davies will be the first, hopefully in a long line of strong Canadian footy players. 
oh, Canada, which only needed a draw Sunday to qualify, has outscored its opposition 54 to 7 while posting 12 clean sheets in qualifying. Clean sheets. I, and I think we're going to, we're planning to do a little bit of content as well, right? For hockey fans that want to get into the World yeah, Cup. Yeah, well, we have an amazing talent on our team that's well versed in, well, two actually that are well versed three. in the three. Sports soccer. Three. Jesus. Nah. Wow. There's a lot of soccer people here. Well, we've, yeah, we've got, it's amazing. We've got Waz, who's a soccer first hockey second guy that we've mm-hmm. been corrupting to create mm-hmm. hockey content. Yep. And his uh, amazing TikTok channel, the 90th minute. The 90th Is he minute. thrilled with the Canadians making it? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, he's jacked. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, I'm wondering if he's because he's such a legit soccer guy. If he has like probably it's nice cheering, the Canadians made it. He's but probably I'm cheering for. Yeah, he's probably cheering for a Poland uh, Canada final with probably a Poland victory. I would probably guess, <laughs> um, but uh, that's okay. Uh, and then we got Caroline, who was in the Canadian women's soccer program and also played a full ride scholarship. And then we've got Liam, who's British, whose birthright yeah. is to be very, <laughs> very knowledgeable. It's in his blood. And you know what I respect his, I respect about his team. He's, he's not like a, like I picked the popular team. His, his team's been like relegated. Yeah. I respect that. You gotta stick with it. You gotta stick with it. Shout out Swansea Swans. For at least a decade of darkness. Did you watch the F1 when you got home yesterday? I did. I did. It, uh, I kind of, I fell asleep in like the middle, like 20 laps, 20 to probably 35, but, uh, woke up, uh, it's all of the, the, not controversy, but just, uh, the actually not very much. And there's a good overtake in the last, like second last lap, I think, which was kind of exciting. So I'm going to queue that up today before the Oilers game. I'm going to watch. Although it I one, find so. Max Verstappen to be such a whiny bitch sometimes. It is fascinating how split people are. Like I haven't gotten into the show yet. I will. I, I just, I need to make time for it, but how split sports fans are on Hamilton versus Verstappen. Like you get people like yourself who are like whiny bitch, hate him, blah, blah, blah. Well, but no, but no, no, I don't, I don't. I'm still trying to understand. He is a fierce driver, but when you hear him on the radio, he is just constantly complaining where you hear Lewis and I'm, and I'm not even on team Lewis either. I, I don't even have a dog in this fight. Lewis is very calm. Like doesn't like get too animated. Isn't whiny. Um, and he had a hell of a race because he didn't even qualify even to make Q3. So he started back in the pack and finished in the points. Wow. So he had a good, good drive yesterday, but, uh, I'm a, I'm a sucker. So, uh, who's my team? My team is, I've obviously McLaren orange and blue. I've also got an affinity for Daniel Ricardo. Cause you look like him. I've been told, <laughs> let me yep. see this guy. And, uh, I also want, uh, oh, fuck you kind of do. Hey? I also want Valtteri Bottas, Botas to, I want him to get in a good car. Cause he is due. He is due. He lived under Lewis's shadow at Mercedes and you'll learn all this. Mm-hmm. And now that he's out on his own, he's due. I'm going to watch it tonight. I'm going to start it off tonight. I was going to do it yesterday, but I was sleeping more. Than they do a watching. really good job. Like it, 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 it's converted me. I never loved watching racing at all, but now that you, you learn about everything that goes into it. So then you appreciate what you're watching. Yeah. Well, as you were telling me about it, the reason I feel like I would get into it. First of all, I love documentaries about sports. Yes. Second, I feel like racing would be an excellent sport to add into my nap routine. You watch it, you enjoy it, but if you fall asleep, hey, yeah, you know, I, I, I like slept. Baseball, I slept for golf. about twenty laps, and I came back, and no worse for the wear. Yeah, it'll be the uh, trifecta to my golf and baseball. Notes. Soccer also has a place to. Yes, it's, it's it's such a soothing. The commentary is normally so soothing. Mm-hmm. That's why I get Liam to call me every day. He talks me to sleep. <laughs> I just love the breakdown of everyone's qualifications. Like Caroline played NCAA soccer and Liam is British. <laughs> <laughs> Liam will talk you to sleep. He did it. He will. All right. Uh, quickly, got to give some love to our friends at DoorDash. Promo code real life. Real life DD. The double Ds. Mm-hmm. Get to the D. It's 25% off no delivery fees on your first order. You're Delish. settling in to watch Oilers Yotes tonight. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's a delivery production. tonight. I am, uh, well, because I was on the bus trip to Calgary, I am low motivation. Mm-hmm. Tonight is a DoorDash delivery night. Mm-hmm. Probably going to go with no- Oodle Noodle, but that's and, personal yeah. bias. Love Oodle Noodle. No $500 Uber ride home for you. Yeah, I didn't have to Uber. I was ready. I was ready. I was always checking how many, how far Ubers were away at any given venue we were at. Shout out to her bus driver. She was great. She was great. And we made great time both ways. Great, great time. time. And we, and she had an, like, 
Calgary is booming right now. The whole city is under construction right now. So her having to navigate, especially it's all those stupid one ways. Yeah. So and many so one ways. And trying to navigate that through all the construction, like those big, like she just didn't give a fuck. She just parked right. She clogged up that. She didn't care. Everything got reduced to one lane. She clogged it all up to let us all in. And of course we're all in Oilers jerseys and shit, which yeah. just would have just pissed off everyone around. It was great. The best. Uh, on the bus ride out there, we stopped in Red Deer, had a little Wendy's. You ate a baked potato. Well, there was, was there, well, it's, it's, I got <laughs> incepted. I, I forgot they had baked potatoes, reminded they had baked potatoes, was craving a baked potato. So I had a baked it's a potato. back to another era, isn't it? Like who, who doesn't like a bit? And this one was a cheese and bacon. Delish. Yeah. It's like, you're not going like, to, it does sound good. Like, they used to have a baked potato bar at the Wendy's, the original OG Wendy's. Yeah. You could yeah. like do up your potato like a sizzler. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I did. And I wish, and in and, and bag melt, which I was jealous, but since I already did the ba- baked potato, I didn't also, I wanted to go the frosty, but didn't because of the baked potato. Yeah. I was happy with the frosty. I was a power move by oh, me. Frosties are good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tyler just oddly got a, a pocket full of chives, which I thought was a good order. <laughs> you were on a little run there of just trying to slander me on Twitter. I was having fun with you. I was having none of it. You were, you were busy loading a video. Eating chives. Yeah. We did a pregame show. We did a pregame show. How good was my filming, Tyler? Excellent. It was good. Yeah, it was better than I thought it'd be. It was. Bag milk was steady and his zoom in work was just masterful. I, I take, I put, a, I put a lot of pride in my work and I did not want to put out an inferior product and it was not, it was, he a good was product. so the, from the minute we got on the bus, he was so stressed. He about was really stressed doing about the pregame show. Cause I live a high stress life. <laughs> like, are we, are we going to do it? We should do it right now. We should, I'm like, well, we like, were like in like, the parking lot. We hadn't even left. Yeah. Like we gotta, like you gotta have the visual of actually looking like you're on the road and yeah, not just in a home Depot parking lot. That's yeah. Fair. Yeah. So anyways, we got it done. Worked out right. Um, I want to share this because I'm looking at some betting angles for tonight's game. Oilers, Yotes. Go ahead. Connor McDavid to get a point. What do you think the line set at? Minus 600. You're not even close. Minus 1,111. (laughs) So that means for those who are not big on betting, if you were to wager $100 on Connor McDavid to get a point tonight, you would profit $9. 9% return. Hey, not bad. You take it. McDavid over one and a half points is minus 154. For him not to get a point, it's plus 560. So that's you bet $100, it makes you 560. That's nuts. That's juicy. That's bananas. Ooh, I almost hit bet on that. <laughs> I would have not like that. Um, I think yeah, we need to get back into the the non-goal score parlays again. Hey, I'm I'm all for that. You know, I'm thinking Travis Boyd tonight probably doesn't find the back of the net for the Yotes. <laughs> can mix him in that. Uh, Kane's cap. You can bet on who won't score. Yeah, you can yeah. bet on a player to not score. Yeah, McDavid, oh, McDavid so not to score essentially pays you six to one or five to one or whatever the hell it is, which <laughs> oh, is that's, insane. That's points for Travis Boyd too, not even goals. Yeah, he won't get a point tonight. Oh wow, that's even riskier. Yeah, that is a little risky. Uh, player goals in this game. Who do we got? Oh, no, no way. Uh, who, who do we got here? Ooh, there's a lot in this Washington game. Hmm. I'm going to build one of these. Sorry, okay. Don't mind me. Fair enough. Yeah. Where you're multitasking while recording a podcast. Mm-hmm. Don't mind you while you're speaking during a podcast. Yeah, I guess we don't have a choice, but to mind. Hmm. Oh, no way. Chase on scores tonight. He has checked out. Oh man. Okay. So the, so what we need to, what I actually want to see tonight is I want to see the Oilers win like three or four, nothing. Yeah. It is important that it's a zero. <laughs> That's fair. I think it's important. It's at least a puck line win. Well, it's got to be a pot. And what does that even pay? Is that like even minus worth? 160? Isn't that gross? It's that's, disgusting. That's no fun. Not worth it. Like, uh, what's a alternate? They'd have an alternate puck line, like minus four, like minus I, two and a half. Would I, be like, plus I, I, I would put my things I'm probably going to bet on tonight because it's there's no juice to be had. Is I might just try to predict a score of four nothing. See what that pays. That'd yeah, that's not bad. Put a hundred dollars on it, right? Correct score 60 minutes. Oilers to win four nothing is 29 to one. There you go. Yeah, put a hundred bucks on, retire. It's all good. Yeah. I think I, think I, might, go. I might go like five, two or six, two Oilers, six, two Oilers is 24 to one. They need to, no, I, well, I, I, they need to, you're right though. They need they to lock need, it down. They need to lock it down. Like that's why like I would bet the under and mm-hmm. I would. So what do we think of the decision to go back to Miko tonight? It's fine. That's fine. That's the right play. It just shows it like that. That's just the, 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 sh- the coach showing to Miko that we didn't pull you because of you. We pulled you because of them. I think it shows that they're really the treating Miko has the net. Miko's the number one. And I don't think that's going to change really anytime soon. If, if they're willing to keep rolling back to him like this, even though he hasn't been great for kind of three or four starts, I think that shows Miko's their number one now. Probably. I mean, the alternative's not great. 
No, it's not. And it's not like we're getting Stuart Skinner anytime soon. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't understand why now they won't bring Skinner up. Is like it cap it's- issues? No. I don't think that I... They might just not want to piss off Mike Smith by sending him down to the minors. But what are you worried about? Oh, yeah, who cares? Yeah, fuck, or, he or needs run to three go. goalies. Like honestly, if they wanted to, because Russell, I guess, is in COVID protocol. Um, so Russell's off your roster. You're not calling up a D man. They could have called up Skinner and started him tonight if they really wanted to. Let's get an email line up here and start throwing. Smith will around. never be a pro and fake an injury and retire. He's going to play this thing all the way out, isn't he? Yep. What about that? He wants to be. Shit, he wants to be booed off the ice the last game of his career of being shelled. Do with Joffrey Lupel. Say you're hurt, then go snowboarding. <laughs> <laughs> I think Joffrey Lupel was kind of just told he was hurt, though, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, yeah, and he's like, I'm not hurt. Look, I'm snowboarding. But like, I, ooh, that's crazy. Oops, you're delete. <laughs> yeah, delete, delete. We can't pay you if you do that, Joffrey. Oops, delete. I still think that's the way it's got to go this summer when you look at the Oilers in their cap situation is I think you sit down, Mike Smith, and you say, hey, man, you're hurt. You're hurt. You're, allergic you're hurt. To your and if he goes, I'm not hurt. You go, oh, great. Well, you're uh, you're going to back up uh, Konovalov in Bakersfield this year. And then I bet you I have a funny feeling Mike Smith might go, oh, yeah, I'm hurt. <laughs> then you're hurt, too, Duncan Keith. I haven't had a huge beef with Duncan Keith. Um, his salary cap next year is too high, though, especially when you could sign a guy like Kulak for probably two and a half million dollars or less. Get the Shea Weber contract. We've talked about this. Plus, he's hurt. You need to send a message to Hart because I don't think that works the way you think it works or as well as you think. Why do teams do it? Teams gobble up contracts all the time. That's what like Vegas tried to get Kessler's contract. Why? Because they had Dadinov going out. Whoops. Okay. They gobbled they, up they, like Jay with a Wendy's big no, no, it, 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 Dadinov going out had, has nothing to do with that. <laughs> it does. I also like that the baked potato put him in a Small food coma. Oh yeah, this is, it's, it's full. It's full of starches. Man right? it, it drags you down. It was there was a there. Yeah, I was I was longing for a nap at the hotel, but <laughs> by the time I got off the bus, I was just full of air and ready to get after it. You're, you're, you're going to learn that it does exactly yeah, what I, I says it say it does. Yeah, you're going to learn. Your I'm, I'm going to fucking learn, man. Just, I'm not going to learn with the CBA. Um, it's incredibly confusing for me. I am very well versed in it. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Ask, Maybe we should just ask, ask Jay how many times he's had to share a bed with the fuck media guy. Ask him. <laughs> Have you? We shared a bed, yeah. Me and him in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck media parties. Yeah, we should ask Hart. I did. I just DM'd him. Yeah. So when Jay said we were doing puck media, I was like, with who again? He's like, you remember that guy that I jumped in the bed with when I barely knew him? Like, oh yeah. What's he do? <laughs> we became associates. Very good. Very, very beautiful. Mm-hmm. I kind of thought there'd be more nonsense on this podcast. I didn't prep a lot of hockey talk. You want oh, more nonsense? We can dial it up. I felt like you had an agenda. Yeah. No, not really. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, that's kind of been my thing recently over the last couple months on this podcast is no agenda. I don't really listen. Is that why downloads are going up? I think so. I, I knew that's what the people wanted. So I have no idea. Are they going up? Yeah, they're going up. Cool. They're that's up and down like a toilet seat. Mm-hmm. That is fair. Oh, man. I just doesn't do Oilers Nation radio numbers. Tell you that. I just want to, at some point, go on a trip with the Oilers one. Like that Heritage Classic when we went there was just That was the, the best. ultimate. Like it, so much good stuff content wise that lived on with the nation came from the Oilers winning that game. Yeah. And it all started with the sun delay. Can I uh, share with you the response from Hart? Sure. Yes. I said, we're having a debate on the pod. Would it be smart for the Oilers to acquire the Weber contract or not worth it? He said it provides no benefit to them whatsoever. The only reason what? they do it, the only reason they do it is if they got an asset for taking it. A better idea is them seeing if they can trade Clefbaum so they can be an under the cap team next year instead of using LTIR. That would give them way more flexibility to make in season moves next year. So if it's Oh a, shut up, Hart. Uh, he's, you know? he's wrong. So the situation <laughs> would be like if you're negotiating with Montreal a deal for whoever you're trying to get from them. Right. Like if you're trying to make a big swing for Brendan Gallagher or something like that, or Joel Edmondson this summer, and it's like, Hey, like we'll take Edmondson. We'll also take the Weber deal. Cause we're going to live in LTIR with Clef bomb already there. And like you finagle it that way. But don't you increase your LTIR room with that contract? But the contract is your LTIR room. Like you need to take that cap it and have it in LTIR. It just complicates things more. 
That's uh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta it would really be, complicate it. It would be like if your work gave you a raise of a hundred dollars a month nice. and at the Ooh, same you. time your rent went up a hundred dollars a month. <laughs> oh, boo. Oh, boo hell. work. <laughs> Slumlords. I just really want that brioche, Tyler. <laughs> We're so close. We're so close. I can We're just it. there. I can taste it. <laughs> I thought you guys would be all over that topic, which is why I was surprised no, to hear you made a backdoor thought, deal. I've, it's preposterous, man. How everybody's already made their meme and how the takes are like <laughs> people who want to make it like the worst thing in society are people who think a comedian, it doesn't matter. Like it's just, ugh. yeah, the, the discourse is mildly nauseating. I agree with that. It's uh, it was a fun night to be there on Twitter and watch everything roll in. Not as good as the Kodak black night though. No, that was the best Kodak night in a black, long time, was, man. Oh, put hockey on the map. Yes. I don't know why he's not at every Panthers game right now. Um, mm-hmm. You others actually well, he's also... been shot since there is that. No, wheel him in there. There's he's a... on crutches, bro. He can't be tweaking with no crutches. There's been a handful of NHL stories on TMZ this year. Kodak Black was one of them. Um, but didn't the Ben Stelter story get picked up by TMZ yes, as well? Yes, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That was great to see. I thought the Oilers did a really good job of that. Yeah. I thought, that I... may be the classiest thing the Oilers have done in. Oh, it was ever. fantastic. And then, really and then Ben did the video before the BOA where he took a dark gun and shot at a photo of Matthew. Kuchina. That was good. And that's when I even tripled down on all my betting. Cause I'm yep. like, this is that there's no way the Oilers aren't going <laughs> to see that. Because and, Ben shot. Yes. Or, I'm like, the Oilers are going to see that and they're going to perform for him. <laughs> I hope they show they must the, saw the video them. after the game. That's that's I should have known. There's probably like a no social media policy a few hours before the game and the others missed it. Mm. You are looking for meaning in the noise. Wow. But I, I would, that, I would run through a wall if I saw Ben shoot to uh, <laughs> Matthew Kachuk with a dart gun. That's good content. That's real good content. You know, Do you think you could yeah. handle wearing the turtle suits in the saddle dome? Ooh, that, oh, fights oh, behind. that'd be a rough one. Oh, that would be great. Cause I, Wanya, I think I went in there incognito. I wasn't wearing a Jersey or anything. I go into the saddle dome incognito. That's Tyler, why I lost however, you at the bar. I lost you at the bar. Cause you were incognito. Yeah. Tyler, however, was wearing the romper, but I oh, think yeah. going in there rolling with the turtle <laughs> costumes, I think that'd be a heavy one. Cause there was some good chirping going on all over the saddle dome. Oh, oh yeah. You're right. The, the romper truck is, was undefeated. I wore my <laughs> bison King Jersey. It was also uh, undefeated and just didn't matter. God damn it. Uh, it was nice. I, I took a lot of selfies at the game. I'm trying to see one. Tyler's the, very popular one. Yeah. One of the guys from Lethbridge messaged me. I've forgotten to message him back, but I will do it. Andrew was one of the guys from Lethbridge who uh, rolled into. He was very nice to talk to. Um, there was also a kid, maybe like 11 or 12, who came up to me. He said, you're one of his favorite TikTokers. Yeah. He's like, you guys are my favorite TikTokers. Can I have a picture? And my buddy was with me and I was like, yeah, he can take it. And he was like, no, I want a selfie. I was like, all right, man. What? And then this that, is this is Tyler's life. Then that little kid ran back to his dad, and his dad was probably like, "Why, my son, did you want a picture with that very drunk man?" <laughs> <laughs> his dad was a Flames fan, wasn't he? Uh, no, it was a father son who were Oilers fans and a father son who were Flames fans there together. Oh, okay, I remember that. That mezzanine was well. It was just interesting because I've never hit the mezzanine at the Saddle Dome. It was a dump. Every table on it was, was just a just a a whisper mm-hmm. away from uh, oh, collapsing. Crap. Yeah. Yeah, um, we played this. We played a game like this on uh, on Oilers Nation Radio, where we tried to guess when Leon Drysaddle would hit fifty goals on the year. He's now at forty seven tonight. Um, yeah, like he he's gonna hit it. He's quick. hitting it this week. He hit it way quicker than I thought he would. My prediction was uh, April 9th against Colorado. Wow. Yeah, you, you look kind of you kind of look silly. Well, because he was going at like a two goals every three games kind of pace, so I was like, ah, that makes sense. He'll just keep going at that kind of pace, and then he scores a hat trick. And because they about play it. Monday, they they play Monday, Friday, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then next week they play Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday. Who's, so I'm who's Wednesday off. again? Uh, Wednesday Los is Angeles. LA at yeah, home. He's doing it this week. Hundy, Hundy, Hundy P. Um, LA Wednesday, St. Louis Friday, Anaheim Sunday. Does McDavid get a hundred tonight? What's that? 97. Yes. Yes. I think it's oh, three, nice. a three pointer against the Oats. I bet on that was my risky business bet. Plus 200 day. plus two twenty or whatever. Cause Over, how many points yeah. McDavid didn't give any against Calgary. Did he get two assists? Two? Yeah. yeah. Cause I got my bet on him. Yeah. Um, but he hasn't scored in four games. So my bet of the day or bet of the day on daily face off or my prop bet of the day, I'm taking him over one and a half points. Cause I think it's free money still. And I'm taking him to score at minus minus one seventeen. I don't think he's going five. Oh, he hit over one. Oh, so I did hit one of my bets then on Saturday. That's nice. Yeah, yeah you did. 
Um, but yeah, McDavid hasn't scored in four games. He hasn't gone five games without scoring a goal in, uh, I think it's been a while here. He's scoring tonight. Yeah, it was back in January. He went five games yeah, without scoring I'm a goal. Taking, He's had a couple slow streaks, but I think he scores tonight. I'm taking all that leftover money. That isn't very much from that bet. That $11.50 that remained in my account. And I'm putting it all on McDavid to score. You should just, yes. you, gotta get, you gotta get greedier with it then. I think you gotta go like McDavid over two and a half points to get the better payout. Oh, look at you chasing the juice. Got it. Sometimes you got it. Sometimes you got to taste the juice. How would I take him at minus 425 to win? That is just disgusting. That's just a horrible money line. How dare you? Horrible. Mm. The All daily right. faceoff better, by the way. What is that thing called, Tyler? The Like the algorithm or whatever that spits out bets for us? Yeah. It favors the, the, the Coyotes today, and I'm trying to find it again because Brock sent it to me as a shot at me today. I Well, but that takes in like a handful of different things into account, right? Like it's... Uh, it th- uh, takes yep. in the value on the money line and things like that. So it's not saying, and Brock wants to hurt me. It's saying, yeah, it's saying the juice of Arizona might because of, well, cause see sports, but cause it's, it's a culmination of all the games, right? Like mm-hmm. that's why. So like, they think there might be an edge on how they priced it, which is all that is. Yeah. It's basically thinking that there's an edge based on the price because while, you know, the system would admit Edmonton probably wins what, eight times out of 10 against Arizona, seven times out of 10 when a team is sitting like plus four eighteen on the money line or whatever the hell it is. Like, you know what I'm doing? Yeah. Connor McDavid first goal score. Oh, I don't mind that. I don't That's mind a good that. one. I like that. Yeah. Yep. And I'm putting 11 50 on it. Good stuff. I'm going to win $80 and 50 cents. Boy, howdy, <laughs> man. When you guys are talking about car racing, I went to a different place. And then now that you're talking about punny, <laughs> money puck line minus eight, I went to a completely other different place. I'm just trying to get that brioche, baby. Hey, we're so close. <laughs> Anything else? Anything else? Or should we wrap? <sighs> brioche. Hey, how about them healthy scratching Cassian tonight? Good. It was a slap in the face. Man, Saturday is the game you need him to be a menace at. And yeah. he did not. It was no. You can't be like, oh, he needs the crowd in it. That crowd should have gotten anybody fired up because the atmosphere of the saddle dome, albeit a shithole was wonderful. <laughs> Did you get my joke there, Bagman? I missed it. What was that? It was a slap in the face. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Cassian. Yep. You see what I'm saying? I see. I hear you. I feel you. Yeah. yeah. Don't you go any closer. We don't get brioches. That's right. All right. Time to wrap. Uh, Bag milk. You want to hit the extra? Wait, not yet, not yet. No. It's actually the one. It's the yellow button right on top of it. But don't hit it yet. Don't. What? Episode three six five three four. four. What, what do we use that one for? Is that for the murder mystery or <laughs> I, UFO podcast? I do a conspiracy. Where the hell podcast. is Chalmers? Hit that button. Oh, yeah. Is that he skiing great. in the mountains? Oh, is he? I don't know. <laughs> it's not only that though like he hasn't been <laughs> on a pod in like four episodes i think he's living hit it again <laughs> is he maybe he's dead hit it again well is he is he hiding is he hiding in his quonset bunker nor, in, in northern alberta hit it again <laughs> but usually he'll at least send a reply in the group chat and be like ah, exactly. sorry boys <laughs> this is an unsolved mystery. <laughs> Should cold call him. Life is way more interesting than that noise around. Uh-huh. Tyler hates Imagine having so that date. Buttons. <laughs> Every time you say anything that's played. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I live right around here. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> Thanks for not pressing the button. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, now can I How's the game going to go tonight? Hit the button. Why does it get so quiet? Tyler doesn't like when I push buttons. This no, is his it, nightmare. This, this was a good bit. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you enjoyed it? Yeah, I did. Oh, I did that's good. good. I, got a, I have a yeah. moderate smile okay. on my face. Put a wrap on it. All right, let's wrap it up. Episode 365. Shout out to the HGA group, DoorDash, Oodle Noodle, Twiggy Berries, wait, wait, and our friends at Points by Canada. <laughs> Keep going. That's all the ad reads I have. Everyone's <laughs> been mentioned the appropriate amount of times. All right. We'll be back on Thursday with a new episode of the podcast. Go Oilers. We'll Thanks for listening oh. to another episode we'll of the Slab Chris Rock. Podcast. Don't want to miss any of our nonsense? Hit the subscribe button and give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram.